Hi guys and welcome to this, our video on Index Laws 4 and 5. My name's Darren, Maths Guru. Really good to see you. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, if you can, subscribe. Like the video. You're like, I haven't even seen anything yet. I might hate you. Well, hopefully you won't hate. Please don't hate me. I've got no friends. Anyway, what are we dealing with today? Enough of that. We're dealing with Index Law 4 and 5. And if you've watched my previous videos, we've done Index Laws 1, 2, 3 and the zero power already and every time I say zero my dog looks up because I call my dog zero. Weird. No, not really. There is a story but more on that some other time. So the point of this video is for me to go through index laws 4 and 5 and examples. Hopefully you'll find it useful. If you do at any point in the video just subscribe and like or leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. All right, so as a recap, and again, recap's really, really important. They nudge your memory if you have watched my previous videos. If not, go on, go watch. Go on, please watch. There are three rules that we have covered so far. The first one here basically is this one, which says a to the floaty m times a to the floaty n is equal to a to the floaty m plus n. Uh, yeah, basically when you multiply index notation, you add the powers. This one here, when you divide uh, index notation, you subtract the powers. And this one here is a floaty to a floaty, you times the floaties together. So a to the floaty m all to the floaty n, you multiply those together, which is really the basis for rules four uh, and five that we're going to come to in a moment. And anything to the power of zero is always equal to one. Really important rule. Now, I'm going to say that we've got two more rules to do, and we do, but they're really just variations of the rule we've already dealt with. So let's have a look at index rule four. And as usual, I've written it in uh, formal notation. But if you've been watching my other two or three videos, you should now start to work out what this is meaning. So we've got brackets, a, b to the power of m is equal to a to the power of m times b to the power of m. Now let's see whether we can decode that. Basically what they're saying is that anything inside a set of brackets, when you've got more than one letter or numbers and letters, when they are raised to the power of m, when that bracket is raised to the power of m, what it really means is that everything inside is raised to the same power. Mm. Let's have a look at an example. So I've got x, y, all to the floaty 4. Now if we go back to our basic sort of um, expanded form notation from the very first video, we could write that out as x, y times x, y times x, y times x, y. Yep, right, that's it, because that floaty 4 tells you to write everything inside the bracket four times with times is between it. But actually, I know that that's the same as x times y times x times y times x times y times x times y, yeah? Okay, now, what do I do next? Ah, oh, yeah, 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 they're all times together, so I can rearrange them and put the letters that are the same together. Absolutely, I knew that's what you were going to say. x times x times x times x times y times y times y times y. You're going to go, why on earth are you doing all this? Right, let me see. x times x times x times x becomes x to the floaty 4. And y times y times y times y becomes y to the floaty 4. And so it says that x, y, all to the floaty 4 is the same as x to the floaty 4 times y to the floaty 4. And there we go. What have we done? Well, we got this x was inside, and that became to the floaty 4, and this y was inside, and that became to the floaty 4. Now, actually, that's a little simplistic, because what I need you to realize is that that was x to the floaty 1 and y to the floaty 1, which we're going to come back to in just a moment. Now there is a little bit of a trick here in that the fact that that rule isn't quite nice because that really should be a to the floaty one and b to the floaty one. And I'm going to show you in a moment where people tend to get a little bit tricked with this. But again, we'll stick with a simpler example so far. So again, we've got 2x to the, all to the floaty three. And I say all to the floaty three because of those brackets. Now again, that's the same as 2x times 2x times 2x or 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x times x. All right, 2 times 2 times 2. Now we tend not to write that to index notation. All right, we could write it as 2 to the floaty 3 times x to the floaty 3. And I'm actually, I'm going to write it that way because it highlights the rule that we're going to do in a moment. 2 to the floaty 3, we go 2 times 2 times 2 is 2, 4, 8. So that become 8 
x to the floaty 3. So that's my correct answer. But if we now go back to the shortcut, the rule, let's have a look. It says that everything inside the bracket gets raised to that power. So we've got 2x all to the floaty 3. So I'm going to write the 2 first and write it to the power of 3. I'm going to write the x and then to the floaty 3. And what do we notice? Yes, those two there are exactly the same. So I've just sort of shortcut a couple of lines of working out. 2 to the floaty 3 is 8 x to the floaty 3 stays it is. And again, this is a very simplistic rule because in a moment we're going to throw a spanner in and that's why I need you to be very, very cautious because what it's really doing is it's taking this term here and raising it to the power of 3. It's taking that there and raising it to the power of 3. So let's do a few more simple examples. All right now I'm not going to do it the long way anymore. We're just going to go straight and use the rule. So everything inside the bracket gets raised to the power of 3. So we've got 5 to the power of 3 times b to the power of 3. There we go. Nice and simple so far still. Yep. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. And certain of these you would need to remember. And b to the floaty 3. There we go. Easy example so far. And now I'm going to throw a spanner in the works because this is where people tend to now start to make mistakes. So we have a lot of things in the set of brackets all to the power of 4. And this is where lots of people now go, OK, so I'm now going to take minus 2 and the numbers get raised to powers as well, to the power of 4. So far that's correct, but now we've got this x cubed. And what sadly a lot of people do, they go, oh, I'll just ignore the 3 and I'll raise that to the power of 4. And they write silly things like x to the power of 4. Sadly, that is not true. Because this is x cubed. That was already in there. And if you remember, I said you needed to raise that to the power of 4. So all of that now gets raised to the power of 4. Ah, oh, do you remember now? If you've watched a previous video, we got powers of powers. And I'm now going to multiply that by y to the power of 4. Now again, I should write all of these things in a much better way. And I'm going to show you in a moment how to. So minus 2 to the power of 4, that should really be in a set of brackets, and this is where the tricks come. So minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2 times minus 2. Well, 2, 4, 8, 16. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, there's my four twos, give me the 16. And a minus and a minus make a plus. A minus and a minus make a plus. So actually, they're all going to be pluses. Now I'm going to use my power of power rule. Because when you've got a power of a power, you multiply them together. So that becomes x to the floaty 12 times y to the floaty 4. And so I can now just write that as 16 x to the 12 y to the floaty 4. Now, what is so, so important here is that this power here must get raised to that power as well. Everything inside there almost gets separated and raised to its own power. So really, what I should have written this as was, take the minus 2, put it in a set of brackets, to the power of 4, times, take the x cubed, write it in a set of brackets, write it to the power of 4. Take the y, put it in a set of brackets, write it to a power of 4. Now if you do that, you will never make mistakes in these questions, I promise you, because your brain will then see powers of powers. And you're going to turn around and say, but the y doesn't have a power. Yes, it does. Remember, that is a power of 1. So I can multiply the 1 and the 4 together. And believe it or not, that minus 2 is minus 2 to the power of 1. So now, again, here is another trick they use in the questions. Is this 4 inside or outside of the bracket? It's outside the bracket. But who does that floaty 5 belong to? The bracket. So the 4 has nothing to do with that floaty 5, nothing to do with it at all. So the 4 actually just stays there. Now what I'm going to do is write each term that's inside the brackets in its own set of brackets. So there's my c squared, which I'm going to raise to the power of 5. There's my d cubed, which I'm going to raise to the power of 5. So that becomes 4. I've got a power of a power, so we multiply the powers. 2 times 5 is 10. I've got a power of power, 3 times 5 is 15. And simplifying that, or writing it without all those time signs in it in this instance, gives me 4, c to the power of 10, d to the power of 15. Easy. 
And I know a lot of the boys out there are probably thinking, my, this is what, actually, if you're even watching this far. Come on, lads, you're probably off watching PlayStation or Xbox, aren't you? Message me below to tell me I'm wrong. Come on, message me below to tell me I'm wrong. You're not really playing Minecraft or Roblox or whatever it's called. I don't know, I'm not hip really. Anyway, the point of it is, if you're watching this far, yes, it seems like a lot of working out, but this question here may be worth two or three marks. And if you don't do your working out, you're gonna make mistakes and lose your marks. So leaving that to one side for the moment, we're now going to deal with index law five, which is the last one, and it's fractions again. But believe it or not, it is exactly the same rule. So we've got A on B all to the power of M. Now with fractions, what we are saying is we can actually take each of those individual terms like we did a moment ago and raise them to the power of M. So we're now going to write that as A to the power of M divided by b to the power of m. Whatever the a term is, raise that to the power of m. Whatever the b term is, raise that to the power of m. Right? So, and again, we can write this out longhand. If you look, we've got x on 3 to the floaty 3. So if we were going to write that out longhand, you would write x on 3 times x on 3 times x on 3. That's just expanded form. That's taking that floaty 3 and expanding it. But we know that when you multiply fractions together, you multiply all the tops together, so that's going to give you x cubed divided by, I'm writing it longhand, 3 cubed. But if we now go back to the rule we said a moment ago, when we've got this floaty number here, that raises everything inside to that floaty 3. So we've got x to the floaty 3 divided by 3 to the floaty 3, and as you can see, they are the same. Now, again, we wouldn't leave that 3 to the floaty 3 like that. We tend to work out numbers where we can. We tend to evaluate it where we can. So that would become x to the floaty 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. And there we go, x to the floaty 3 over 27. But again, don't get caught with the gotcha like we did previously. It's whatever this a term is. Whatever this term here is, x raises to the floaty 3 and the three got raised to the floaty three as well. Another simple example before maybe we get a bit more complicated. So let's have a look. We've got six on B all raised to the floaty three. All right, so I'm gonna take the six and raise it to the floaty three. I'm gonna take the B and raise it to the floaty three. Now again, I wouldn't leave it as six to floaty three. I've got to work that out. Well, six sixes are 36. 36 times six. 6 6s are 36, 6, 12, 18, 19, 216. Now again, there was nothing wrong there with using a pencil and paper calculation. You don't have to do it all in your head, all right? So that become 216 on B cubed. And there is my expansion, right, using the fifth rule. So does this look complicated? Yes. Is it complicated? Not particularly, because all we're going to do now is we're going to combine rules three, uh, sorry, four, and five. So first things first, everything inside that bracket, everything inside that bracket is now gonna be raised to the floaty four. So we're gonna take each individual term, I've got that minus two, so I'm gonna write that minus two and do it to the floaty four, times, I've got a squared, then I'm gonna raise to the floaty four. See the trick here, previous stuff in this video is now helping you here. I'm gonna divide that by the three to the floaty four times the b to the floaty 4 times c cubed to the floaty 4. Writing all of those in brackets, really, really important. And you're going to say, well, you didn't write the 3 to the brackets. I should have done, all right? Bad maths guru. The reason I'm doing this is I'm looking for powers of powers now. We're doing it step by step by step. So I've got minus 2 to the floaty 4. 2, 4, 8, 16. So that's 16, and a minus, and a minus, and a minus, and a minus. Well, there's even numbers of minuses, so they'll become a plus. If you don't understand what I meant just there, there is a video on this, I promise you. All right, I've got a power of a power. 2 times 4 is 8, so that becomes a to the floaty 8. Okay, 3 to the power of 4. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81, so that becomes 81, times b to the floaty 4 times c to the floaty 3 times 4 is 12. Is anything going to 16 and 81? Nope. So in which case that becomes 16 a to the floaty 8 divided by 81 b to the floaty 4 
c to the floaty 12. And I can't do any more simplification because there's no letters on the top or the bottom that are the same and I can't use any more of my index rules here. But did you see what I did there? Everything inside that bracket, every individual letter or number gets raised to the power of four, looking to make sure that we do powers of powers. And one more example. Uh, you're going to say, this is too hard. No, it isn't. Come on, we can do this. It's got fractions. No, it hasn't got, well, it has got fractions. It's not that hard. Come on, you can do this. All right, so we've got powers of powers and fractions, and it doesn't matter. The fractions don't matter. Powers of powers. So I'm going to do this fraction first. It's got a floaty three. So I've got my x squared, all to the floaty three, times my y cubed, all to the floaty three, divided by c, all to the floaty three. You're going to say, that was overkill. No, it's all right. And I got times. Now we're going to do this fraction to the floaty four. So I've got x to the floaty four times c to the floaty four, all divided by y to the floaty four. All right, let's simplify this because we've got powers of powers. So I've got a uh, power of a power here, so that's going to become x to the floaty six times three threes are nine, y to the floaty nine divided by c to the floaty 3 times x to the floaty 4, c to the floaty 4, all divided by y to the floaty 4. Now, fraction times the fraction, what do we do? We multiply all the tops together and multiply all the bottoms together. So let's see what we've got here. We've got x to the floaty 6 times y to the floaty 9 times x to the floaty 4 times c to the floaty four. Sorry about my handwriting, guys. I'm getting to the bottom of the iPad. c cubed times y to the floaty four. Have I finished? No, because we can do some simplification on the top, because I've got an x to the floaty six and an x to the floaty four. So x to the floaty six times x to the floaty four becomes x to the floaty 10 times y to the floaty nine times c to the floaty four, divided by c to the floaty four, a three, times y to the floaty 4. Have I finished? Well, obviously not, because I've basically written an equal sign. And now we've got y's on the top. I can't simplify anymore on the top, and I can't simplify anymore on the bottom. So I now look at the top and the bottom and say, do I have letters in there that I can cancel through? Well, I do. I've got three c's on the bottom. We'll cancel with three of those on the top to leave just one. I've got four y's on the bottom that will cancel with four of those to leave me five on the top. And so my correct answer would be x, x to the floaty 10 times y to the floaty 5 times c to the floaty 1, or x to the 10, y to the 5, just the c, we don't need the floaty 1. And there we go, that's my correct answer. And that, again, is the end of this video. All right? I know there seems to be a lot in here, and it is practice. Practice makes perfect, I promise you. But I have now covered index laws 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the zero power. My name is Darren Masguru. Thank you very much for watching. If you're still watching, if you are, subscribe. Tell your mates. I know it's not cool. Tell your mates for me, please. Greatly appreciated. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you in another video. There are more videos in this series coming soon. Take care. I look forward to seeing you again. And stay safe.